I remember pulling back the curtain to look outside and seeing all the flashing lights. It was blinding. Our apartment building was surrounded by police. In that moment, the best way I could describe how I felt is that it was like an out-of-body experience. Things had spiraled so quickly, and our fight had escalated into a six o'clock news kind of breakup. One that marked not only the ending of a relationship, but the beginning of the messy process of starting over. It led to letting go of the sporty car and the perfect shade of blue that we had shared, and in its place, borrowing a, an old yellow VW bug with a two by four piece of wood attached to the place where the bumper used to be. It meant driving a car that was super tricky to shift <laughs> and the gas gauge didn't work. But it ran most of the time. <laughs> Having a less than reliable car led to losing my job at the bank. And along with that came trading in the pride of earning a paycheck for the embarrassment of receiving food stamps and a welfare check. And it didn't end there. I also was evicted from my apartment. Thankfully, friends took me in and I moved into the unfinished basement of their home, along with my two-year-old little boy. He thought it was pretty cool to sleep on a fold-out chair in his Ninja Turtle sleeping bag. Me? Well, I was happy he was still little enough to think it was fun. That was 1988, and I was 20. And honestly, I've lost track of how many times I've started over again since then. But what I can tell you is the most recent time, which was January of this year at age 51. <laughs> you see, in 2016, I left a 20-year career in human resources to start my own business. And it was a dream come true. Not only did it give me the opportunity to be doing work that lit me up, I was really excited to be leaving behind the workplace drama and looking forward to a type of freedom that I'd never experienced before. And it did all those things. But as it turns out, <laughs> that was a bit of a problem. Now, don't get me wrong, it's not that I missed the drama, but what I hadn't considered is how much I'd miss the, do you have a minute, kind of interruptions that sparked conversations around what was going on in people's lives with their kids, with their pets, maybe even just a recipe they had tried the night before. I missed the spontaneous laughter and I really missed the meetings after the meetings, the ones that didn't have a thing to do with policies and procedures. I missed the connection that came with being part of an office environment, the everyday ordinary things. And as a result, I began to feel isolated and depressed. And I gotta tell you, I was shocked <laughs> because I considered myself an introvert, so I never even considered the possibility that I would miss the energy of being around people every day. Tried to focus on things to fill the void and was successful in small pockets of time, but I couldn't sustain it. I wrestled with this feeling for three years. So in November of 2019, when I saw an ad in the paper about a part-time human resources job that had flexible hours, I found myself wondering if I should apply. 
<laughs> now, if you had been listening to the conversation going on in my head in that moment, it would have sounded a little something like this. Are you nuts? <laughs> you have a business supporting other business owners, no less. What will your clients think? What will your entrepreneurial friends think? It'll kill your credibility. And what about your schedule? What makes you think that you could actually pull something like this off without it hurting your business? And Lynette, really, really, do you want to go to work for someone else again? Well, when I had courage to ask these questions out loud, to give them voice, my husband lovingly <laughs> looked me in the eye and said, what is it that I hear you tell other people all the time? Just because you apply for a job doesn't mean you have to accept it. Why don't you follow that advice and see where it leads? <laughs> right, I do say that, don't I? Well played, husband of mine, well played. Following that bit of good advice, I went online, applied for the job, and ultimately accepted the position. I didn't need this job in the way that I'd needed jobs in the past, but it was a much needed strategy to improving my mental health. In the 30 years since my first starting over experience, a lot has changed with the world and with me. But there's one thing that hasn't changed, and that's the stigma we attach to starting over. And it's kind of weird, right? Because starting over is a shared human experience. It's something that touches all of us at some point in our life. Think about it. In your lifetime, you've probably done things like changed college majors or made a shift in your career field. Maybe you've packed up and moved across the country. And maybe you've started over because of circumstances you didn't count on. Things like divorce, illness, company restructures, and unexpected things that happen along with things like a global pandemic. So if this is a shared experience, then where does the stigma originate? It's been role modeled for us generationally. We've seen it present in our homes, in our houses of worship, in our workplaces, and at school. It's become an ingrained pattern in our thinking, a habitual thought. One that influences the way we think about others, but more importantly, it influences the way we think about ourselves. Now here's the good news in that. Just like any habit, we can disrupt these negative thought patterns to put us on a forward path. And so I want you to think for a minute about choosing new thoughts. I want you to imagine for a moment that your brain is like a record album. Now, I know some of you probably have never seen a record album before. That's why I brought along this visual. I want you to notice the flat, round piece of vinyl that is the album. Notice the grooves in the vinyl. That is where the soundtrack lives. When you put this special needle on the record, it will follow the grooves all the way to the end, unless you pick up the needle and move it to a new track. Choosing a new thought is like picking up the needle. It's creating a new track in your mind. It's creating, it's the catalyst for a new neural pathway in your brain. It's one that takes you from that well-worn path of negative messaging to positive thoughts. Now, to help you in choosing new thoughts, I want to introduce to you SCAN. SCAN is an acronym that I created to help me remember 
a simple four-step process that's really quick to help move the needle and choose that new thought. So let's take a look. Scan is stop, consider, align, and nurture. So first we're going to talk about stop. Stop is just exactly what it sounds like. We want to disrupt the negative thoughts in our mind, so we are going to stop by saying something out loud like stop or cancel. But <laughs> you may be in a room of people where it doesn't feel really comfortable to be talking to yourself. So you can do other things like having a band that you wear on your wrist that you can snap or creating some other physical cue like gently tapping your head. Next, we'll stop to consider. Consider what are other possibilities? How is it that this choice in front of us could help us to meet a current need, to provide unexpected opportunity, to create a positive impact? So we're going to consider what will that be. Next is align. The third step is to align. And when I talk about align, what I want you to do is to think about the things you just considered, all of those possibilities, and then start to align your thoughts and actions with those. That's where we pick up the needle and move it. Lastly, but I really want to emphasize this is one of the most important steps, it's nurture. And this is important because this is the place where we meet ourselves with kindness and compassion. It's where we take the time to remind ourselves of some powerful truths. Things like, I am worthy. I am resilient. I am wildly capable. I may be a beginner at this thing I'm getting ready to do, but I am not a beginner at life. These four steps of SCAN help us to create a new soundtrack in our mind. The reason that's important is because until we turn down the volume on these negative messages, we continue to stand in our own way, and it dims our light. The light that could be transforming our families, our communities, our schools, our world. I want to invite you to think about the places in your life where you may be putting yourself on hold, standing back, not giving yourself permission to take that next starting over step. I want you to shine a light on the places where those old, defeating messages of fear and shame live. then scan. Disrupting the stigma of starting over is important. It's necessary. And it can all start in this very moment with you. <laughs>